industrial worker, regardless if it's a blue or white collar worker, is connected already today and can be enhanced by tools and means that are working at a much higher degree that we thought it's possible nowadays. The exciting thing about it is that not only it's, it's uh, possible today, but in the background, companies like Google and Upscale are developing these frameworks further that can be used easily. Thank you, Susanne. <laughs> so, here we go. The question is for sure for maybe all of you, or most of you, or some of you, how to get starting? Where to start? While it's easy to just go and buy glasses, the question is what to do with it. And is it worthwhile? So there is where we think that Nagaro, not only like a, as a technology company, as an integrator, as a company with high skilled experts, programmers, architects can help, but also by applying best practices and processes. So what we came up with, not only for the wearables area, but for the area of IoT, for the area of big data and so on, is our so-called digital mobilization kit. So we try and support to, uh, we try to support our clients to start, uh, to start the process. How does it work, basically? Three phases. First of all, the first thing, and the most important thing probably is, we sit together with your team, and your teams means business stakeholders and some technicians probably as well, and try to come up with ideas. Not we do, we facilitate the process, but to find ideas and potential use cases that might be useful for your company and your business and your customers as well. Second step is to evaluate these if they are justified with a certain business value, because if the business case is not, doesn't add up, probably you won't do it. And this is a very reasonable thing, unless you will say, this is a strategic project. You know, strategic projects are the ones that you put money in and it doesn't matter. So, but it could be, you know, for R&D reasons. And the third is go and do something with it. Show it, because if you can't show it, it doesn't exist. It's like an appointment. If it is not in Outlook, it doesn't exist. Same thing like here. So, um, but for getting into depth in it, so I would like to ask my colleague Umank again, who went through with many clients through the process. Please come up, Umank, and give us a little bit of an insight on how this can work. Sure. Thank you, Ramos. I think if I look at what Damos just mentioned and what Mathes said in his presentation on uh, the journey that A1 Telecom Austria had on this topic. Uh, I take you back your memory to a slide, which was a picture. There was a mention of a workshop. And that's the first part of, of that journey. And what Mathis was presenting today was the last part of the journey where they are doing the prototyping, uh, piloting, and so forth, and, uh, and so on. Uh, so from, from that perspective, Oh, sorry, I moved too fast. I think the first part of uh, our activity with our client starts with a super-sized chart paper, uh, which covers all your walls. Uh, and the idea is to take down and look at, with you, uh, your business process. This could be one business process. This could be multiple business processes. In this particular example, uh, this was a manufacturing client. We looked at what are the key steps in their manufacturing. Within that, what are the key elements of uh, the work? How much time they take? What are the key critical steps and so forth? And then what are the areas they want to perhaps optimize, improve, enhance, et cetera? And once you've got this storyboard, and obviously very important, the storyboard consists of uh, client teams which consist of their IT teams, and their business teams, and uh, technicians who brought in their own perspective on how they actually do it and what is at their pain point. So while 
business managers might have a pain point around transparency, uh, data management, and so forth. The workers had, let's say, concerns around how can I get this done faster without necessarily making it too complex. So I, I use paper. In this case, they were using paper manuals. I use paper going to mobile type of technologies or tablet type of technologies do not make sense because I want to be agile, I want to be able to keep my hands free. From this storyboarding onwards, we come up with something like this. This is more towards the end of what our process looks like. Uh, this is a digital chart of how that whole information that we take from you in that innovation workshop gets translated into uh, uh, the workflow. And I try to, point. yeah. So at the top is the business process for this particular client, uh, which we numbered as one, two, three, four, five, six. So from the time that they do preparation of their manufacturing all the way down to they start the logistics process and to the final ship packaging and shipping. Within this business process, we identified what could potential uh, activities with or potential areas of optimization with glass could be. So they could be around logistics, they could be around collaboration, they could be around assembly and so forth. And in each one of them, identifying what, uh, what could be potential use cases followed by how to go about it from a qualitative perspective, what would be the benefits, from a throughput perspective, what would be the benefit, how much would you perhaps increase your throughput, what would be perhaps your investment avoidance, what would perhaps be your efficiency improvement and so forth. Um, and obviously, the stage that we are in, these are not necessarily driven by pure numbers. There is a lot of qualitative data that people would agree in a room that doing this would make sense. You may not necessarily have, whether it's a 100% improvement or 500% improvement, but a fairly good understanding within the stakeholders that going down this path would lead to substantial improvements. And once you've done that, uh, I go back to the poster where, uh, we, we start the journey with the clients. What we look at with them is the personas of all the stakeholders that particular use cases would uh, impact. So in this particular case, there are logistics workers, there are people from engineering, plant managers, uh, maintenance workers, HR teams, integrators who help bring in workers and make sure they are effective in the plant, uh, subject matter experts, and so on and so forth. So the use cases that are built in would have in some way or another, a business optimization would impact all these particular stakeholders. And we bring them all together into our innovation workshop, understand their needs, their perspective on that business optimization, understand what, again, uh, they, they provide in terms of their work today, and what would they like to improve for future, and more of that with respect to different parts of the process. Leading finally to what I called as the final output, which comes as key ideas that they can seek out in terms of use cases, what those features in those use cases would be, what are the benefits, and what would be the efficiency improvements. That essentially relates to your business value and mobilization and then there is obviously a prototype that we offer on Glass as a part of this package, where we would use a Skylight platform, the Google Glass, to create a prototype based around one or two chosen use cases, allowing you to see exactly how your use case would look like. These use cases would obviously be standalone, would, ha would not be fully integrated into your ERP systems, but give you a fair flavor of how the final delivery would look like. And more of this, so in this particular case, uh, we looked at multiple use cases, electrical assembly, visual inspections. In visual inspections, you will note we, what we also identified for our client that beyond the glass, there would also be opportunities for them to bring in AI. 
So while your journey might start with AR, start with optimization of your workflow with assisted reality. Once you've got that improvement, what do you do thereafter? So the ideas that are contained herein would also service the clients for the next steps beyond the immediate project. So it becomes also a knowledge base for them of how they can expand that idea into the future. And um, some of you spoke about to me while uh, during the day about topics like uh, training on the job. Uh, there is uh, excellent use cases where you could use uh, training modules which you might already have or capture online existing training uh, material to create uh, uh, use cases around training. And again, the benefits could be about uh, how you create engaged learning experience, suitable to pers people's personal needs, allowing high quality content to be delivered in person while generic content to perhaps be delivered through AR and other technologies.